Hi, I'm Eileen Roach and welcome to today's show of Between Friends. I'm excited that you're joining me. Type in in the comments and let me know where you're watching from. I see many of you are saying, brr, it's really cold where you are. Like uh, Sharon Crean, you're up, up in uh, upstate New York, so for sure it's chilly there. And Consuelo Hokey, you're in Del Rio, Texas. Maybe it's cold there, maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm in Dallas. It was you know, I said to my, one of my coworkers the other day, it's like permanent menopause living in Texas. We were 78 degrees at around 6 p.m. And, you know, six hours later, it was 38 degrees. So you have to kind of have your whole wardrobe in the car. You know, you have to have a lightweight shirt, sweatshirt, maybe even a down jacket. You never know. You just never know what's going to happen. But uh, I'm so glad that you're all joining me today. It's really Wonderful to have you here. I know it's a busy time of year, right? First day is December. Everybody's really ramping up for the holidays, getting gifts ready and decorating and so forth. And today I'm going to talk about stitching flawless multiples. You know, it's something that we all do, in, especially if we're gift givers, right? It's lovely to make a set of towels or a set of monogram napkins for someone as a hostess gift, a wedding gift, bridal shower, you name it. And also, maybe some of you are making a little money with your embroidery machine, and you've been asked to do T-shirts or, uh, you know, company golf towels, everything that matches, right? So we're going to tackle some of those steps so that you get great results, great results. Um, yeah. Oh, hi, Kathy Colvin. Good to see you here. Happy Thursday. Let's sew is right. Love that. Love that. And oh, Dory Hobson down in Naples. Greetings to you, too. It's so lovely to see everyone uh, joining us today. And, you know, I know that part of the of the country of Florida, they've had some tough times this fall. So great to see that you're here and looking for, um, you know, inspiration for embroidery. So, Anne Philbeck, you say you are looking for a dense design to embroider towels with initials. Well, I might have you a little covered here today. We'll see. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about perfectly matched sets linens and, um, and towels, you know, household items, speed hooping techniques, and streamlining the prep time, because isn't that our biggest challenge? It's not so much the stitching. Goodness, these machines that we have are fabulous. They do all the heavy lifting of the stitching, right? But it's the setup. It's the planning, the uh, placement, and the hooping, that is our challenge. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to um, overcome those challenges. Hi, Lisa Mooney, another Jersey girl. Love those Jersey girls. Okay, so maybe if we're over in PowerPoint, uh, do you ever have a day like this when somebody asks you, what did you make today? And you're hoping you can say something wonderful, but maybe not. Maybe all you made was mistakes. I hate that. My sister Marie and I, uh, my stitching sister, Marie Zeno, and I used to joke about that a lot. You know, how, how's your stitching going today? And, you know, oh, mistake after mistake, it happens. Here are some beautiful samples from Marie. And here you can see where stitching multiples really matters, that the placement is all consistent and absolutely um you know, perfect, right? So here we have bath towels and then hand towels are the smaller ones below and also to the right. And then she even put a single initial on a, on a washcloth. Um, I don't normally do that, but you know, Marie, that was her customer and that's what they requested. But notice how uh, the monogram is sized for each item and the placement is such that, now she shot this on the floor, but if this was actually hanging on a towel rack in a in the bathroom, you know, you want to make sure that the monogram is not obstructed by the towel that's laying over top of it. And so that's why there's so much space on those large bath towels above the monogram so that you would lay a hand towel in that open space. And that's how they normally hang on a rack. Sorry, I don't have a photo of that for you. Um, but maybe you'll forgive me. But look at some of the samples Marie has done. You know, the towels on the left are team towels of uh, like tennis ladies, I think. And then I'm not so sure the ones on the top. Uh, I think that's a country club crest. So, you know, you're going to get all kinds of requests, whether you're in it, you know, embroidering for money or not, you're going to get requests from family members and friends for sets of different items. So here we go. Here we have some, um, 
another beautiful set of towels. And then look at those napkins. Are they luscious? I mean, you know, that on point placement is very elegant, looks great on a dinner plate. And of course, sweatshirts, you know, that's another um, popular multiple sets that people ask you to do. So to streamline the prep time, uh, keep it simple. Okay. Don't overdo it. Don't overthink it. Just pare it down into some simple steps like limiting the font, the font or embroidery design choices. So if this is something that you're doing for someone, don't open up your laptop or your software and show them every font that's stored on your computer or every embroidery design that's stored on your computer. Take a couple moments and uh, select maybe a dozen different fonts and maybe just a handful of embroidery designs that you are confident will work on terry cloth or if it's a fine linen, you know, a napkin, that kind of thing. Don't offer them anything because they're not going to understand the limits of uh, fabric, right? Terry cloth towel, you're not going to do an open, delicate vine type, you know, um, open airy design. You're going to want some meaty satin stitches on that so that it can, you know, withstand that nap and the nap doesn't work through. So, you know, make it easy on yourself. Make it easy on yourself. Then, believe it or not, limit the number of colors. You know, there's a reason why multi-machines, multi-needle machines have 10, well, 6, 10, or 12 needle limits, right? And there are 16 needles also. But that's because it's an efficient way to stitch. And I know there are gorgeous embroidery designs. And we make some of them too that have like uh, 20, maybe 30 color changes. And it's wonderful for color blending and so forth. But on simple items like bath towels, you know, uh, table linens and so forth, you probably are not going to need all of those color changes. So look for designs that um, offer a, you know, less color choices. And to make it really easy, just do an embossed design like this. It's very elegant. And color-wise, there's only two colors in that embroidery design. And one is the same color as the towel that it's sitting on. And the other, not so sure you can see it. Let's bring that up full screen, please, um, the PowerPoint image. There's a little white outline around that oval shape that just helps it pop a little bit. Like if you were to look, hold that hand, that towel in your hand, you would see that. So it's just two colors. And boy, do they stitch fast. So I thought I would show you how I made that design in our Perfect Embroidery Pro because it's super easy and you can do it too. Let me show you how to make that embossed towel in Perfect Embroidery Pro. Start with a simple shape like this fleur-de-lis. This is artwork. And then go to the artwork tool and select the ellipse. And let's just drag and draw an oval around that shape. And then we'll select both. Click on the uh, center align icon. And now with both selected, click on the combine tool. And now it's one piece of artwork. Right click, convert to complex fill. <gasps> Look at that. And now, we have this open area that is the fleur-de-lis, and that will be the shape that we see on our towel. Okay, let's, uh, our stitch length I set at 3.0, and our density needs to be um, lightened. So I'll move that up to one. If we'd like to add an accent, select the design, right click, and in under utility, you'll find create border. Click on Create Border, and you'll see that you now have a steel or a satin stitch on the outside of the image and on those interior open areas. So I like to change that to a run stitch, and I'll shorten that stitch length to 2.4. And for a little added punch, I'll turn it into a two-ply. And then add another color so that my outline stitches in a different color than my embossed area. Mm -hmm. 
Wasn't that so simple? I mean, really, that is two minutes and you have a very unique embroidery design. So before I take your questions and answers, I thought I'd jump over and look at some of the comments you already have. So our friend Creative Applique says, hi, loved seeing me on Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco. That was Monday night. So if you uh, watch, thank you for watching. I most certainly enjoyed my hour with Joanne Banco. That was just delightful. I was honored that she asked me to uh, join her and for just a conversation. It was really fun. So if you'd like to watch, you can go to YouTube and search either Joanne Banco or Let's Go So, and it'll come up in the feed. So thanks for calling that out. That's very nice. We did have a really nice time. Uh, Risa Ranke, she's embroidering 40 pot holders for gifts using her magnetic hoop. Absolutely. That makes really quick work for sure. Really quick work. Okay. So let's see if you have any questions. Uh, <laughs> okay, so yeah, there's the link for Perfect Embroidery Pro if you want to learn more. And you know, our embroidery tool shed, that's the free software that we offer, you know, that you can just go to our website and download and it will resize embroidery designs for you, allow you to copy, paste, rotate, and print a template of an embroidery design. But also in that embroidery tool shed um, is you'll have access to demo all of our embroidery software. So if you just want to go in and play with Perfect Embroidery Pro, you can. And it won't allow you to save a design when you're in Perfect Embroidery Pro, but it will show you all the features that um, it has. So, you know, you can, t you know, test before you buy, right? So let's see, Mary Jo Williams wants to know what kind of stabilizer do we use on linen and terry cloth towels? Well, I'm gonna show you that in a moment. So in on the linen, I'm actually gonna use the sticky stabilizer because I'm gonna do that in a sticky hoop, but on the um, terry cloth towels, I used a soft tear away because after I tear it away and wash the, the terry cloth towel, it's just gonna be soft and luscious and you really won't feel any stabilizer in there at all, which is, um, you know, what you want to, what you want to do. Okay. So let's see what's next. No more questions. We're good and caught up right now. Yeah. Risa Ranke says the hour with Joanne Banco went really fast. It did, especially when I got kicked off for like <laughs> three, four or five minutes, whatever it was, but Joanne Banco, she knows how to roll with it. She just, you know, she just rolled with it until I got back in. Okay. So let's see back over in PowerPoint. We're going to streamline our prep time, right? We already talked about reducing the design uh, offers, the font selection, and also colors. But streamlining prep time also includes marking all of your items at one time. And the reason why this is important in my world and really why I even came up with this product is, you know, you're, I'm sure you have a busy life, right? It's the rare afternoon. Retha Ranke, you're, you're uh, embroidering 40 pot holders. I'll bet money that you're not going to just get all 40 done in one sitting, right? You'll be interrupted to maybe walk a dog or uh, fix dinner, you know, take out the trash, whatever it is you have to do, right? Um, so I find that um, it's best to do all of the marking of the items first in one sitting, and then they're marked and you can set them aside and embroider them as time allows. So let's head over to the overhead cam and I'll show you what I use for uh, marking my household items. So this is our perfect uh, placement kit. And you know, this has been out for a long time. I'll bet many of you already have it. And if you do have it, you know, let us know in the comments that you use it. So it has 15 different templates inside. Now these are item, item templates, meaning they're not embroidery design templates. They are templates of towels, uh, the corner of a napkin, the placement on center chest, uh, a, a cuff of a dress shirt, that type of thing. So I'll show you. So if I was going to do a set of kitchen towels for someone, and here I have three, I would use the uh, hand towel without border because here's my hand towels. And notice they don't, you know, they don't have a border. Let me pull that up so you can see. It's just, you know, a hem, just a tiny little hem. And so what I do is, first thing I do is fold them vertically and lay them on a flat, flat surface. So I've matched my edges, right? And here's my fold. And then I take my um, template 
and I align that bottom line, which says uh, bottom of tau, this vertical line is aligned with the fold. And then I have a hole there to insert a, a target sticker. And of course these target stickers come with it. You'll notice that it's a square opening and that's so it can accommodate the baby lock and brother positioning stickers because you know as wonderful as they are and how they operate on the machine you still have to know where to place that sticker on your towel right so there we go so there's one done i mean it's that fast and then i would open it up and smooth it down and then i'm ready to get that hooped but let's go ahead and do another one and i'll just show you how fast you can do three kitchen towels, towels without borders. It's just so fast. You know, the hardest, hard, well, you know, your biggest task is folding that towel. That's all you really have to do is fold that towel, fold that open, and just make sure that target sticker is positioned in place. And we'll do this one more time for the third towel. And it's just so simple to do that you have them all set now, all three are done, and all you probably need is maybe 20 minutes to get this hooped and stitch, you know, one towel at a time. But you know, when you get interrupted and you come back, you'll be able to just do that towel, the next towel that's in line. Okay, so that was the hand towel without border. That comes in the kit. So then let's look at, you know, this is a very common item, right? Hand towels for the bath that have a border. So the placement on that is a little different. So now our template is um, has our vertical line, has a horizontal line that is supposed to be placed at the top of the border, not down here, because look where our design would wind up. So we're gonna place that right on that vertical line at the fold and then position the horizontal line right at the top of the border and get another target sticker. And you know, it comes with target stickers in uh, the box in the perfect placement kit. And so again, we're just gonna push that over so it's is secured. And you know, I'm gonna do these four towels. Where do you see how fast this is? I mean, you know, and the beauty about this is they're all gonna match. And all this prep work is gonna be done in one sitting and you're gonna watch me do it. And it's so fast you know, you know that you can do it. It gives you the confidence to do it because you're not depending on any measuring or, you know, fancy folds or, you know, find the center of this. You're just folding that towel in half and using the border as your alignment guide because the your eye will also use that horizontal line as a baseline when it's hanging on the, on the uh, towel rack the lot, your eye will use this baseline to, in, you know, to uh, rectify that your embroidery design is aligned with that. So that's why we use that border. Okay, so that's our hand towel with border. That's a different template that's in the box. The next up is the bath towels. And yeah, these are huge bath towels, but it's all part of a matching set. So let me bring that up here. We'll work on the other side, I guess. I want you to see that border. Okay, so now we have a different template because our positioning is going to be higher than it was on the hand towel. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and mark these four. Again, I have folded these in half vertically and I'm just gonna make sure that target sticker plays in, stays in place and fold that up, remove it, get another target sticker and repeat. And you know, this is gonna take a total, I will have done 11 towels in the time that you're watching me do this. So I imagine you could do the same thing in the amount of time that I'm doing. And you know, that's half the battle in the embroidery room is to have the placement and you know, your plan all laid out, right? You've already created your embroidery design so you know what color it needs to be. You get those threads all set up and then it's just a matter of boom, boom, boom and make it happen. So there we have it. Now I could get those towels done in no time. Yeah, I know, see it is, it's so easy, like creative application, she says, well, I think it's a she, how do I know? Um, that's sexist, I guess, so let's see. So yeah, it does, it takes all the guesswork out because you know, it's, it's, it's embroidery and you want it all to match, you want it all to look really, really nice. 
But, uh, it, you know, it's not rocket science and you don't want to spend hours measuring each towel and so forth. So, yeah, it's really good. It's a great product. So let's see, uh, Risa, you wanted to know about my shirt. That was last week's on the house. I'm going to show you those step outs. So maybe you missed it. You know, we uploaded that on Thanksgiving Day. And that's a free design for you all to enjoy. And um, so let's see. So Belinda says, so it is placed at the, the center of the design is at that yellow marker. That's right. Uh -huh. And that Target sticker had an arrow on one leg of the crosshair, if you notice, Belinda. And that arrow is designating the top of the embroidery design, right? Because we always want the uh, monogram for Mary to stitch like it's a monogram for Mary and not Wilma, right? So that's why there's an arrow on the target sticker. And then when you are at the machine, you will center your needle over that target sticker and verify that the image on the screen is going in the same orientation as the arrow on the sticker. So if the arrow on the sticker is pointing up, then the um, embroidery design should be in that orientation. If for some reason you have to hoop so that it's rotated to the left, then you should do the same with the embroidery design. And you know, just about every embroidery machine today gives you the ability to rotate an embroidery design in the editing features. So yeah. Okay, so let's see what's next. We're going to mark all that we marked them all, right? Wasn't that fast? Now we're going to talk about hooping, I think. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about speed hooping. Um, there we go. And it's all about the hoop. So there's two ways to approach speed hooping. Yeah, it doesn't really mean that, you know, you're just moving really, really fast, although you might be if you're in a commercial environment, right? But uh, in my home, you know, I work with, first off, I, I you know, I decide how many um, projects, you know, items I have to stitch in that day. And so how fast do I really have to go for sure? So these are some beautiful designs. These are all from my sister, Marie. Uh, the other evening we talked about, uh, on Joanne Banco's show, we talked about making gifts. And I described this gift basket on the right that has that beautiful monogram towel that was, uh, I mean, the monogram towels and the monogram ribbon, that's a wedding gift. And of course, that's the date of their wedding. And then all of it is wrapped in tulle and the bow secures the tulle. So the netting so that, you know, it just keeps it all together and makes a really nice, um, really nice presentation. So Becky Munns, we want to know, does size matter? Well, there is a, a commercial recommendation of the size an embroidery design should be. And those details are in the perfect placement kit. But I will say that, you know, sometimes, you know, people like bigger. So uh, if that's the case, then I would um, use, here, let's go to the overhead cam. I would like this is the bath towel with border. So I would use either the bottom edge and align that with the border. Or if I needed to go really, really big, I would use that hand towel without border. And that's going to raise it up even high. I would put this at the top of the border on the bath towel. And then that would give me ample space to fill you know, the canvas of the towel. So you do have some options. It's all about the right angle, right? The crosshair, a, a horizontal base. Let's see, do the target stickers work with other software or do you need, no, so tar, Diamond Crystal. Target stickers work with any embroidery machine. They're really not specific to a software program. It's all about placing that target sticker on the item, let's call it a towel. And then when you put the towel that's hooped onto the machine in your editing features on your machine, you wanna use the editing feature where you actually move the hoop, you know, like on the Baby Lock Brothers system, there's two editing features. And one is where you move designs around on the screen and the hoop does not move at all until you hit embroidery. And then the hoop moves to the position where you place the embroidery design. But if you 
um, use your navigation keys your or jog keys, the ones that allow you to go north, south, and east and west, when you are in the embroidery mode, then your hoop will move. And as the hoop moves, you keep an eye on the needle and make sure that it's centered over the crosshair of the and that it is, you then remove that target sticker and stitch your embroidery design. So in a future um, Facebook, you know, we'll actually go and really do that under the camera. I'm not set up for that today. I don't have that camera activated, so I, I apologize. But yeah, it, it, that's how you do it and that's how you use them. And it, this very same concept goes for when you print a template of an embroidery design. Templates with a crosshair on the center of the embroidery design, and it will have a arrowhead on just one of the legs, and that's de designating the proper orientation. So let's see, Belinda, you want to know, is this for a monograms only? It's not for monograms only. It, it can be for any embroidery design and, and uh, not really a border design because, you know, it's for single design placement. So it could be a monogram. It could be a name. It could be something, something like, you know, something else. Thanks, Connie. Yeah, I like my new haircut, too. I should have done it in July, to be honest with you. OK, so what's next? I've lost track. Oh, yeah, with those beautiful. OK, we're going to talk about the street hooping. So. Well, you will not like this, but two hoops is the way to go. I know. How many hoops do you have to own? Well, I can tell you, in every, every commercial embroidery business, they have multiple hoops. And not only because they have multiple heads, but they always want to have one hoop on the machine stitching and another item in the same size hoop, hooped, ready to go on so that it cuts down on day time. So I'm going to hoop some of these, uh, two of these hand towels so that you can see how I do it. And I'm going to do a monogram, small monogram, you know, small, right? I'm going to use a five by seven and a six by six because I'm, I'm just going to do a four by four design, right? And I like these two size hoops, you know, five by seven was my go-to hoop forever. You know, it was the, I think it might have been the first one that we even had. And then uh, when we came out with that six by six, goodness, I just love that six by six size, a little wider and a little, it's not as tall. So I don't have to fill it with as, as much length of back. So I place my soft tear over the metal frame and then my first towel. And I'll give you a good tip on this, how you could do this border. And that's a nice, strong horizontal line, right? So I'm going to fold that up right at that border and place it at the edge of my hoops. So I align the edge of the folded border straight hoop and open it up. Take my and hold it perpendicular to metal base on hoops and then look at that i am practically perfect, right and hey let's not it's a monster hoop so you tell me what i did i smoothed i tugged i pulled no harm no foul in a snap hoop monster because it's flat two flat surfaces holding it together you will not get any fire distortion so the fact that i really square i see where this board hits or on my and so straight maybe so okay, just lift that frame a little bit pull this ever so so that now it is smooth another tip and i'll do this live one day is when we put the machine um and then we center our needle over that target sticker now i'm definitely going to have to rotate it right because here it's going to attach to the machine in this fashion oh some technical difficulties okay we'll just stay there
Hey, hello everyone. I, I hear we have some, uh, having a little bandwidth problem here, a little bandwidth. So we'll just start over about the hooping. I see that some of you have said you missed a lot of the explanation about the hooping. So um, we'll just kind of hang on. I'm looking at the, uh, at the signal, at the strength of the signal. So we'll just kind of keep it rolling until, oh, there we go. We're starting to come back up. And yes, thank you, Sybil, for saying we sound better. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Okay, I think we're doing a little bit better. Sharon Cream, maybe refresh your screen. Okay, Ann Philbeck, you say it looks good. Great. Thank you so much for staying with me and for letting us know that it's looking good. So I believe I was uh, over at the picture is blurry, but you hear me, Wanda. Okay, well, folks, refresh your screens. That might help you also. Okay, so we'll go over to the overhead cam, but that's going to take just a moment to bring that back up again. And we'll see what happened. Okay. All right, I'm still here. I'm still here. So I'm going to bring that oh, overhead cam in just one second. I've got to rearrange that. Um, yep. Any minute now. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Did you mute that, Roy? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So here we are. <laughs> We're going to talk about this again. I like to use the two, you know, these are my two hoops that are similar in size. So I feel comfortable stitching a four, you know, maybe four by four, four by five inch embroidery design in a five by seven or a six by six. But this allows me to have one design, a one towel on the machine stitching, and then the other one is ready to go. So I'm going to show you how I hoop. I placed my soft tear away over that metal bottom. And then I take my towel and I fold up the towel at the border because that's a nice straight line. And I fold it right at the border and I align that with the straight edge of the hoop and then open it up, smooth it out, take that top frame and make sure it's you know somewhat aligned top and bottom with that metal frame and then drop it. And then, Notice what I'm doing. I'm moving, moving that top hoop, making sure it's aligned with the frame underneath. And there's a little bit of snow plowing here. So I'll fix that, smooth it out, pull it out. Oh, that's the beauty of that snap hoop monster. You don't have to worry about any fiber distortion. I can pull and tug on that all day long. Love that. So then this one would go over to the machine. I would take my Magnet shield, place that underneath and carry it to the machine and, you know, let it stitch, right? So next up would be my six by six hoop. And I'm going to treat that in the same way, same stabilizer. Of course, I'm going to treat all these embroidery designs with the same method. Take my towel, same idea. I'm going to fold over that um, border and align that with the edge of the towel. Open it up. Yeah, just kind of smooth it out. You know, I do that very carefully. I don't want the hoop to move. I don't want the stabilizer to move. Then I take my top frame and place that perpendicular to the metal frame underneath and then just drop it. And look at that. That's perfect. Now, is it really perfect? Well, we can check by where does the border hit the ruler? Is it hitting it in the same location? And it looks like this could come up just a little bit on this side. So I'll pull that towel just a little bit to align that, and then I'm set. Now, when I go over to the machine, you know, after that first towel is stitched, I, I'll just lift this and carry it over to the machine and stitch this design. Meanwhile, then I take that five by seven hoop and start hooping. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're welcome, Mary Lou. I'm happy to... Um, you know, repeat. I'm. Well, I apologize for the bandwidth. Whatever happened. Let's see. Um, 
So Suzette, you wish these hoops were made for Janome machines. Well, we do make them for the Janome 500 and the 550E. And um, someday soon, they'll be available for that beautiful Continental. So we're working on that. Yeah. And Jane, you like that tip for lining up the towel border. You know, folds, borders, stripes on fabric, those kinds of straight lines are really an excellent aid in hooping. And, you know, look at your item and see how you can use a design element that's on the towel or shirt or whatever it is to help you in uh, your placement and your hooping. Yep, definitely. Let's see. Okay, so uh, the shield under the hoop, was that so that the towel would not drop down? So I'm gonna show you over here, let's go back over. So we have a tendency, many of us, when we are uh, handling our hoops, right? Right now I have the shield underneath, as you can see. But if I didn't have that there, many times we, you know, there's our towel on the table. And then when we pick it up, we go like this. We literally go like that. And now look what a, look what a hot mess that is. See, everything is, you know, it's just a habit. We, you know, our fingers want to push up in here and you can see how much fabric has now been moved out of position. So I never carry a month. No, I will have to rehoop that. I, I wouldn't just trust on pulling that down. So um, it's pretty good position right now. And there we go. And then to move it, I just, you know, it's just a transport. That's it. It's only taking that over to the machine. And of course, when I get to the machine, then I am holding it by the attachment and sliding it on with the attachment. And of course, this goes by the wayside. That doesn't go any, you know, it's not gonna sit under the hoop on the machine. Do I use a topper? Um, you know, um, I'm not big on the toppers and I'll tell you why. Water soluble stabilizer, you know, goes away once it's wet. And isn't that what we do to towels, right? We, we use them, we get them wet and then we wash them. They're definitely wet. So all of that water soluble topper dissolves. And if you have, uh, you know, a napped terry cloth, it's going to eventually work its way through those threads. So I depend on my embroidery software to, um, to increase the density of an embroidery design or add what we call nap blocker, which is uh, very similar to that embossed design that I showed you earlier, the fleur de lis design, the area that was stitched down so that the nap could come forward. Well, um, our nap blocker stitches that same type of fill, but behind the monogram or behind the embroidery design, allowing you to stitch on any kind of napped fabric and have confidence in washing it over and over. And then you won't have to worry about um, any fibers peeking through the fabric later on. So, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, Jane, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Oh, your first time. Well, welcome. We love having friends here. That's why it's called Between Friends. You know, it's no fun without you friends, for sure. And uh, Gayla, you love your magnetic hoop. You know, it, it's interesting. Um, Joanne and I were talking the other night, like, what's your favorite hoop? And I have to tell you that it really, if I didn't have a magnetic hoops, I, I don't think I would be embroidering anymore. So... Um, they're just too clunky, those standard ones, the inner and outer ring. All right. So what if you are not doing towels? What if you're doing napkins and you have <clears throat> six, eight, 10, 12, who knows, right? So let's take a look over in PowerPoint and um, look at these gorgeous napkins. Don't they set an elegant table? And of course, we want them all to match. This is where all of those items are going to be dis on display let's see, let's say at your, you know, Christmas table or your New Year's Eve table, something special like that. So you really want the placement to be perfect. So I have a solution for that. We use a large hoop. Oh, oh pardon me, pardon me. So we're going to go to the overhead cam. And before I, I get there, I'm going to have to clean this up because I got a big mess over here. And we're going to start with something a little different. Instead of the monster hoop, we're going to use um, a sticky hoop. So I know many of you are familiar with our sticky hoop, right? It is a flat metal hoop and it comes with 25 sheets of pre-cut stabilizer that fit your this sticky hoop perfectly. It comes in all sizes. Okay, 
I'm going to set this aside just for a minute while I work on the hoop. So I'm going to show you how you can do six, maybe even eight uh, napkins in one hooping. But before we do that, we will go ahead and use the napkin on point template to mark our, our napkins. So I've already folded these. And it doesn't matter if they're folded. In fact, we'll open it up so you can get a better look. And this time, we have a right angle and it's on it. It says napkin edge. Place that on the napkin edge. This is where you find out that if the napkins that you purchased, you know, are really right angles and most likely they aren't. So, you know, there's no harm in aligning that with the inside of the hem, not the outside. But whatever you do, just make sure you do the same placement on every napkin. So if you're going to align it with the inside of the hem, do that on every napkin. If you're going to do it on the outside, do that with every napkin. But I almost always do the inside. Okay, and then we're just going to put our target sticker there. Same technique, right? Super easy, super fast. You know, as <clears throat> when you purchase these napkins and you are about to do the placement, examine each corner. Some will be better than others and select the best one. And that's where you'll put your embroidery design. Just take the time to do that. So I'm just going to do these three. I've already done two previously that I'm going to show you in a minute. And then we just put that target sticker in there. And again, notice the orientation. That arrow is uh, pointing to the interior of the napkin so that when this is on the dinner plate, you know, and folded up like so, it reads like the letter P with the foot down here and the body of the P up in this direction. So that's what that arrow is doing. Okay, so here I have sticky hoop already engaged, uh, already I have two napkins that I've hooped and I just stitched, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a basting guide so that you could see this was my first one and I stuck it down and I start in the back of the hoop. So here's my attachment, right? So this is the back of the hoop. If you were sitting in front of uh, a tape at the machine, you would be down here and this is behind the needle. So I've stitched number one. And you know, if I was really monogramming these, the monogram would be inside. And then I fold that over and then I stitch the second one. And now I'm going to fold these up, use a little bit of painter's tape to hold that down in place. And the same with this element, I mean, this corner. Okay, now, look how easy. Oh my goodness gracious. So I know how big this is, right? It's about three inches in height. So I just wanna make sure that I'm going to clear that. And clearly I am, that's more than, that's probably three inches from the center to the top. And my whole design is three inches. So I know I have good clearance. And then I'll stitch that design. And then I'll fold this over and take the next one and repeat and fold that down, stitch that design. And then we're going to tape this up and we're gonna be able to get two more. So we'll, we'll be able to do six napkins with this size embroidery design in this hoop. I think this is an eight by 12. And if you were, you know, really trying to conserve stabilizer, what have you, you could probably get eight a napkins on here and you would do the same, fold it over and then repeat. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's great. Okay, so let's see, um, are the target stickers reusable? They are definitely reusable. Of course, the more lint that you get on the back of them, the less tacky they become. But oh, I keep a target sticker on my machine, you know, just stuck up there sitting on the hood of the machine. Oh, for goodness, maybe months. I mean, they last a really long time. And let's see, Dorothy, uh, yeah, they are. For, let's see. So uh, can, I, can you just use the monster hoop without the top as a sticky hoop? Well, Dorothy, you can hoop sticky stabilizer in a monster hoop, but I would not suggest putting the sticky stabilizer on the bottom of a snap hoop monster because you will ruin the suede that is on the bottom of a monster hoop. And let me get that hoop to show you what I mean. Okay, so 
on the on the overhead cam here, I can show you. Um, here is suede on the two vertical sides of the snap hoop monster. And that is what allows the hoop to glide across your machine without marking your machine bed. Now a snap hoop, a sticky hoop doesn't have that because the sticky stabilizer is doing that function. So that's why there, you know, I, we never suggest that you put sticky stabilizer on the bottom of your snap hoop monster. That's why we made a second hoop. Now you can hoop in snap hoop monster, sticky stabilizer, and then cut, you know, peel away the protective paper on the inside. You could do that for sure. Absolutely. And we used to do that. It's just a lot of people don't like to only hoop a stabilizer in Snap Hoop Monster because it's a strong hoop, right? And, you know, it can be difficult to separate without any fabric in there. Okay, let's see. What kind of questions do we have? Uh, Jane O'Malley, your biggest hoop is five by seven. You know, Jane, Jan, we talked about that at Let's Go So Monday night with Joanne Banco that those of you who have a five by seven hoop only, you your embroidery skills are probably superior to those of us who have these giant hoops and cameras and scanners and all of that, right? Because you're forced to uh, learn how to rehoop, how to connect embroidery designs, how to work with templates, how to really get the most out of your machine. So don't beat yourself up. And then someday, if you you know want to go the easy route and you upgrade, so what? You know is, um, you know, then you can. So let's see, Dory Hobson, isn't any sticky star stabilizer hard to remove? She's not a fan. Hmm. Well, I, you know, I tend to agree, Dory. I don't use sticky stabilizer all that much. I don't mind it on like a jean jacket. I don't mind it on napkins like this because it will tear away nicely. But um, it, you know, some people really don't like sticky stabilizer and I get that. Mm -hmm. I understand that for sure. So let's see. Yeah, Jan O'Malley, uh, you have flip designs to fit two on a hoop. Absolutely. Absolutely. Aretha, you use your five by seven the most. I guess so if you're doing 40 um, pot holders. My goodness, what an endeavor that is. Okay. So, uh, Aretha, you liked my shirt. We talked about that the on the house. So let's, it's time now for uh, on the house. But before we go, I just want to tell you today's special is the Perfect Placement Kit, and it's $39.99. And uh, we have that special right here in power. There we go. And it is uh, comes with 15 templates for common items we embroider on all the time. Towels with borders, towels, hand towels with borders, hand towels without borders, bath towels with borders, bath towels without borders. Uh, corner napkin placement, right corner napkin placement. And we even have left, left chest embroidery in there, center chest embroidery. Uh, and, and more. So it's really quite handy. And someone had said they they have the perfect placement kit. Has it been changed? They bought it years ago. Me too. The only change that uh, we made through time was that the opening is now square instead of round. The first perfect placement kits, the opening on each template was round to accommodate our target stickers. But since then, um, Baby Lock and Brother have uh, come out with their positioning stickers, which are square. So we've just made a square opening, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dory. Thanks, Dory. And thank you for joining me for another day. Yeah, I know this haircut, it's great for Florida. Just saying, not that I'm going, but. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the On the House because it's almost time.
Okay, and then last week's was this T-shirt that I'm wearing. So it has that kind of unique top. Uh, uh, you know, the top, the hanging lines are not absolutely horizontal at the top. They're a little staggered so that it goes cleanly around the uh, uh, neckline of a T-shirt. And the T-shirt that you see there in the image is the one that I'm wearing. But yesterday, I turned down that ribbing and just top stitched it all the way around. I hate those heavy duty ribbing, you know, that they have on mass t-shirts. So you can do that too. This was an easy design to make, easy design to make. Uh, of course, with your download, you get printed instructions on how to make the embroidery, how to make this project. You also have a template that you'll print and uh, you can print it in color or black and white, doesn't matter. And then you're just going, and also the color sequence, so you know exactly what colors we stitched it all in. And then you're going to place that template on the t-shirt, aligning those hanging chains with the ribbing. So see the image on the left? You'll notice that little peach uh, circle in the center of the ribbing. That's the center of the t-shirt. So I folded that in half, marked it with a pin, and then placed my template at that ribbing so that the vertical uh, arrowhead uh, on the template is aligned with the pin and the tops of those Christmas balls are aligned with the ribbing. So super easy, super easy. And then, you know, you're going to hoop it in a five by seven hoop. I use Snap Hoop Monster because it's fabulous for knit fabric. And, you know, you'll turn it inside out and nest it all on top of the machine so that you don't stitch through it and wind up with a bib <laughs> and then pop it out of the hoop and that's it. So this week, um, we have a really cute design coming up, really cute design, which is the hedgehog. How cute is he? He's got headphones on and little boots for winter. Oh, we just love him. We think he's adorable. And uh, actually, through the month of December, we have some really adorable wildlife designs, kind of cutesy like this that all coordinate. So I think you'll enjoy that. And remember, these designs are free every Thursday. So, uh, and they have been all year. You just go to dzgns.com on the house and grab uh, your embroidery design. I don't know how long they'll stay up there. So if you haven't downloaded those, all those ones that we just showed you, please do it now so that um, you have access to them. We are going to continue this program into 2023. So you'll have a lot of fun, uh, this continued fun. And we love it when you share your projects. So on social media, Facebook or Instagram, Pinterest, if you would tag your project, a photograph with on the house or dime so along, we'll find it and we'll put you in that video. We love that. So we'll run that link at the bottom of the screen so you can see where the on the house is one more time. And there you go. But our website is dzgns.com. And uh, if you just go to that website and in the search bar, do on the house, you will find it. So net, let's see, you were just going to ask about next year. Yep, that's, we're going to continue. We've had so much fun doing it. And I know many of you have enjoyed it. So we are definitely going to do it. And Lisa, you're welcome for the designs. It's been our gift to all embroiderers all year. And we hope that you continue to, um, you know, benefit from it because we sure have enjoyed making it. Next week, we have a really exciting duo that's going to be in the house. We have Ashley Jones and Stephanie Young from Caesar. And this is, they're going to talk about when crafting and embroidery collide. So there's a whole lot to learn from Stephanie Young. And of course, Ashley Jones always brings her A game. So we're at, uh, so excited to have Ashley, welcome Stephanie. I'm, I'm going to let those two handle this because this is their area of expertise. And I'll be sitting with you uh, watching what they have in store for us. But it is also a new product reveal. And so I hope you'll join next Thursday, same time, one o'clock central time and uh, standard time. And so we uh, look forward to seeing you then. Thank you for joining me today. Mm -hmm.